Our next section is going to cover something called Avogadro's Principle uh, and then the next law, which is called the Ideal Gas Law. So Avogadro, from the same Avogadro's number, uh, has a principle as well that involves gases. And he says that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of particles. So that's to say that if you have the same pressure, volume, and temperature, then you should have the same number of moles. Uh, and the reason that we can assume this is because gases are very small, at least the atoms are very small, uh, and we're assuming they're all the same size, okay? And obviously that's not true. Some gases are very small, like hydrogen. Some are much bigger, like xenon, okay? Obviously that's not the case, but given their relative size compared to the volume of the container, the difference in sizes is negligible. So for instance, you know, down there at the bottom uh, of this page, and maybe you can see it, I've got a you know, small white particle, but a slightly larger blue particle, uh, but if we take into account, you know, say this entire slide, all right, was the container, it doesn't really matter, okay, what the size of those particles are. They're so small relative to all the space that would be in here that we can right, sort of neglect the difference in size between those two particles. So why is this important? Well, you know, if pressure, volume, and temperature are the same, and therefore we can also predict the number of moles of gas if those are the same, uh, well, we also can then figure out, right, if you have one mole of any gas at certain conditions, we should be able to know how much space it takes up, okay? Uh, and so if we take one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure, and I remember standard temperature and pressure is 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere, right, so it's zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, very reasonable conditions, uh, we should be able to predict how much volume that one mole of gas will take up. And we've been able to do that. So if you have one mole of gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, it will take up 22.4 liters. Doesn't matter what the gas is, right? Because of Avogadro's principle, the gases are assumed to be the same size. Uh, it will fill up 22.4 liters, okay? So we can write that as a conversion factor of either 22.4 liters per one mole, or we can write it, you know, flip that with one mole is 22.4 liters. Okay, so it, if you're thinking about it, like, space-wise, that means one mole of gas is about 11 two-liter bottles, to give you some idea. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here real quick. Uh, it says, calculate the volume that two kilograms of methane gas will occupy at STP. So we want to first figure out the moles of gas. So this 2.00 kilograms will be 2,000 grams of methane. Methane is CH4. Uh, that's going to have a molar mass of 16.05 grams per mole. So let's figure out the number of moles here, right? That will be grams divided by molar mass. So we got 2,000 grams divided by a molar mass of 16.05 grams per mole. Uh, and that's going to give us, let's see, 2,000 divided by 16.05 to three significant figures, 125 moles of methane, okay? Uh, and then since this is at STP, we should be able to figure out how much space this is going to take up. We had 22.4 liters per one mole. If we multiply that times 125 moles, that will cancel your moles unit and leaving you with liters, uh, which would tell us how much space that's going to take up. Uh, and the answer is it's going to be a very big space, <laughs> 125 times 22.4. Uh, this is roughly 2,800 liters okay, of space. So <laughs> almost 1,400 two-liter bottles, if you want to think about it, uh, to get just two kilograms. Now, mind you, that's about, I don't know, roughly five pounds, <laughs> a little bit less than five pounds of air. It's going to take up about 1,400 two liter bottles, just to give you a mental image of how much that is. This is not very dense at all. The second part of our lesson today is going to cover the, uh, not combined gas law, but the ideal gas law. Um, but it's going to start with the combined gas law. So uh, the ideal gas law that we're going to learn, I think, is one of the most important uh, laws um, that, that at least chemists deal with. And, and how they determine what it was is, is kind of creative. So you don't necessarily have to know this derivation, but it's going to show you where this law comes from. Okay, so how to get from the combined gas law to the ideal gas law. So 
the combined gas law was P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. If we just assume then that because the left side has to equal the right side, well, that means that P times V divided by T, whatever those conditions were, should equal some constant. You know, and then P2 times V2 divided by T2 should also give you some constant, and therefore the left side would equal the right side. So PV over T should give you some constant. Uh, and with that information, we can do something kind of useful. We can also then plug in moles. Um, and, you know, and since adding moles will say increase pressure or decreasing moles would decrease the pressure, uh, then we can determine that pressure in moles should be directly proportional, and we can put moles on the bottom of this relationship. Um, and so that's kind of where we, we throw in Avogadro's principle with this. Uh, so we have PV over N is number of moles here, okay? So if you see that, N is moles. PV over NT is now equal to some constant, kind of like we had PV over T equal to a constant. Um, so we've got PV over NT equaling a constant. This constant actually has a value, um, and it's it's called the ideal gas constant, and it's, it's labeled with R. We're going to call it R here in a moment. What's really neat about this is if you go take any real set of conditions, okay, if you go get real data and you record the pressure, volume, moles, and temperature, and do this mathematical expression to them, you will get this same value, okay, any real set of data. Uh, and that constant has a value of 0 0.0821, and the unit is liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. That's the unit for this constant. We'll see where this comes from here in a little bit. Um, but it's really neat that this relationship, PV divided by NT, should always give you this constant value. Well, if instead of we just put in constant there, we put the letter R, uh, we have PV divided by NT equals R, which is that 0.0821 value. Uh, and so what we did then was let's move N and T that are on the bottom over here up to the top on the right side so that it's all one line with no denominators, and we get PV equals NRT. And this is the ideal gas law. This is the equation you definitely want to know. Uh, hopefully, you know, you never forget this if you take a chemistry class that talks about gas laws. PV equals NRT. Sometimes this law is called a Povnert. Uh, it's just kind of what it looks like, PV equals NRT. But this is the ideal gas law and kind of where it comes from. Do you need another derivation? No, uh, but you should know this equation down here. Now, because R had a special unit, 0 0.0821, and it was liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin, that means for PV equals NRT to work, we need very specific units. Okay, that means pressure must be in atmospheres. Okay, volume must be in liters. Uh, N is moles, so there's no changing in that. R is our constant, and T must be in Kelvin. So when you are using Povnert and you're plugging things into PV equals NRT, you must have the values in these units. If they're not, you have to convert them. Okay, so we'll try a sample problem here. Calculate the number of moles of ammonia gas, which is NH3, contained in a 3 liter container at 300 Kelvin uh, with a pressure of 1.50 atmospheres. So the one variable we don't know is N, right? I've got volume here, I've got a temperature, and I've got a pressure. So we're going to rearrange this equation for N. We'll bring RT to the other side, so we get PV over RT is equal to N. The pressure here was 1.50 atmospheres. It's in the correct unit, so that's good. The volume is 3.00 liters, also in the correct unit. R is 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin, and T is 300 Kelvin with three significant figures. Okay, uh, let's plug this in so we get 1.5 times 3 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 300, and to three significant figures this is 0.183, and the unit is moles. Uh, so why does R have this really clunky, weird-looking unit with it? Well, it's because it cancels all the other units in the ideal gas law. Notice, atmospheres, cancels. Liters, cancels. Kelvin, cancels. And what we're left with, okay, as a result of this whole thing is 
basically 1 over 1 over moles, which is really just moles, which is great because that's the unit that we're looking for over here. So the reason that R has this clunky liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin unit is because it cancels all the other units in the ideal gas law. Okay, here's one for you to try. It says, what is the temperature of neon gas if there are 10.09 grams of neon in a 2.50 liter container at a pressure of 5.00 atmospheres? Okay, uh, make sure you note here that uh, the grams of, this is grams of neon, not moles. So you will need to convert this to moles to plug it into PV equals NRT. So give this one a try. We'll see how you do. Okay, so here's our solution. We first need to turn uh, the grams of neon into moles, so divided by the molar mass, 20.18 grams per mole. Uh, and then we solve this equation for T, PV over NR. Uh, plug in the values, 5 atmospheres, 2.5 liters on the top, 0.0821 is R, and 0 0.500 uh, moles is therefore moles. And then solves for T, that comes out to 305 Kelvin, uh, just in case you are curious, converting those to numbers you might be more familiar with, 31.5 degrees Celsius, which is 88.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, a pretty reasonable temperature here for about half a mole of neon.